What is the common factor between a 2000 degree C torch and your toaster? Toasters usually have heating elements made of an alloy of nickel and chrome. Some researchers take that material, add some ingredients to it, make it into a filament, and inject that filament through a torch at around 2000 degrees C to create heating elements on three-dimensional surfaces. Sounds fancy? So to show you how this process works in the real world, we're here in this huge lab where research and development is happening all the time. Maybe not on the weekends. Some researchers work on the weekend. But hey, they're developing the process so they optimize the parameters and basically create better parts. And with us today is a researcher and a fellow colleague whose name is Marvin. Hi. Hey Marvin, you good? So obviously filament spraying uses filaments as a raw material, right? As a feedstock. Yes. Many of you might know filaments from 3D printing. However, the purpose of the filament in this case is a completely different one. What we are trying to do with the filament is we just use it as a carrier in order to process very fine powder. So what we've done is we disperse our powder, it can be ceramics or metals, within our polymeric binder material, so the filament, and then we process it with the thermal spraying. Here we can see our setup. We've got the filament in the back and it's fed through a mechanical feeding system into our torch. In the torch we have a supply of ethene and oxygen which is burnt. It's basically like a, a strong flamethrower and you'll see the process in a moment. The filament will burn off as explained earlier and we'll apply our coating on a substrate. In the process we burn off the binder material and then the dispersed material will be molten in the flame and we can apply that molten material on any surface basically in order to create a thin and very homogeneous coating. So what we can see here is one of our testing samples. We can see it where we contact our power supply and then the current is going through our, in this case, nickel chromium coating. This is the gray part. The length, the width and the thickness of the coating define the overall resistance of our heating element. So this was very interesting. We saw the flame and now maybe we can see the results, how you can analyze whether it was good or bad. Up we go. Right now we're in the microscopy lab and I'm gonna give my place to Marvin who's gonna explain to us some details on the coating itself using micrographs. And Marvin. So here we can see the microstructure of two different coatings. On the left side, the microstructure formed by our filament spraying process. And on the right side, mm -hmm. we can see a conventionally sprayed coating, which is produced with coarser powder. And as you can see, there is a major difference. We can see that the coating itself actually shows two different colors. One is very bright, this is our metal, and darker areas, this is oxidized metal. And ideally we want as much metal content in our coating in order to have very low resistivity. In this way we can reduce the size of our coating and increase the length and decrease the thickness of our coating. And if we have very fine particles, you can see that our coating overall looks very similar if we take an average of the cross section. However, if we look at a conventionally sprayed coating, the particles are much coarser and in addition we have more oxidation. This can lead to a failure of the coating because single spots in our coating will heat up significantly more than other spots. And therefore we can get local overheating and we just basically burn through our coating. The particles in our filament are below 5 micrometers typically. By using very fine particles, we are also able to create really thin coatings and very fine structures. How would you define a good quality uh, coating or a nice coating? So in the case of resistant heater coatings, we want a very homogeneous microstructure and a very even thickness throughout the whole coating. It's because the resistance of the coating or a certain area of the coating highly depends on the microstructure and the coating thickness. Right. So that was it for today for our episode on uh, filament spraying with Marvin. Awesome work. Hot Marvin. Stuff.
<laughs> Stay tuned. And for more hot stuff, see you in the next video of Dr. Jared. <laughs>